Okay, in this video, we're gonna do some more partial derivative examples, but this one asks us to find all of the first and second partial derivatives of this function. So we kind of have to think about how many partial derivatives we should have at each step. All right, so for the first partial derivatives, I've got f as a function of two variables, so that means I have two first partial derivatives, one with respect to x and one with respect to y. So we'll go ahead and find those over here. Um, partial derivative of f with respect to x. It's important on problems like this, by the way, to label your work because when I go to find those second derivatives, I'm gonna be finding derivatives of derivatives and so I need to know which derivative is which. So it's important to label which one is the partial with respect to x and which one is the partial with respect to y. Okay, so partial derivative of f with respect to x. I'm gonna look at my function, look for where are the x's and how are they connected to everything else. And I'm gonna notice that I only have one x in there. So this is a pretty straightforward first partial derivative with respect to x. Uh, the y squared out front will be being treated as a constant. So when I differentiate with respect to x, that y squared will just come along. And then times the derivative of ln of a function. I'll have one over that function, so that's the derivative of the natural log part, and then chain rule times the derivative of what's inside, times 2x. So if I want to clean that up a little bit, I'll have 2xy squared over x squared plus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and bring down my label here, just so I can put a box around it. And so that's one of my first partial derivatives. Okay, um, I also have a first partial derivative with respect to y, so I'll go ahead and find that. I'm going to look here and notice that there's only one y in this problem. So when I find my partial derivative with respect to y, uh, everything else here is going to be treated as a constant. So uh, because x is being held constant, x squared plus 1 will be held constant, and ln of x squared plus 1 will all be a big constant out there. So when I find my partial derivative of f with respect to y, I'm going to have that constant part that will just come along. And then times the derivative of y squared with respect to y will just be 2y. Okay, so that's a pretty straightforward derivative, almost just like if you were finding the derivative of 6y squared with respect to y. All right, so there are our first partial derivatives. Uh, there are two of them. And then the question is second partial derivative. So in another video, we looked at a little chart and talked about some notation when we first introduced partial derivatives and thinking about how many first and second partial derivatives a function would have. So I'm just gonna draw that little diagram over here just to emphasize that. Uh, so I've got a function of two variables so I have two different first partial derivatives, a partial of f with respect to x and a partial of f with respect to y. And then for second partial derivatives, I'm just finding derivatives of derivatives. So notice that my partial derivative of f with respect to x involves both x's and y's. So I can differentiate that with respect to x again. So I'd have a second derivative of f with respect to x twice or I can take this first partial with respect to x and then differentiate that with respect to y. So a mixed second partial derivative. And that notation is a little tri tricky there. So I've got a derivative with respect to x and then I differentiate that with respect to y. So that operator acts on the left. And then same thing here, a first partial derivative with respect to y involves both x and y. So I can then differentiate that with respect to x. This would be a mixed partial derivative. Or I can differentiate it with respect to y again. Okay, so the notation's a little tricky there and you should practice and especially on your written work to make sure that you're using correct notation and I will be glad to give you some feedback on that. Um, but the key thing here is understanding how many second partial derivatives you have. So two first partial derivatives and really four second partial derivatives. So for each of these, I'm gonna kind of just diagram my answer sort of like I did here, except sideways. I've got my first partial with respect to x, and then I'm gonna differentiate that with respect to x again. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to differentiate this with respect to x. So I'm going to identify where are the x's and think about how they're connected to each other. So I've got an x here in the numerator and in the denominator. So I probably use quotient rule to find this derivative. Um, so the derivative of the top with respect to x is going to be 2y squared times just the bottom function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function with respect to x all over that bottom function squared. Okay, if I'm not going to do any more with this partial derivative, then I'm probably just going to leave it in that form. There is some distributing through and some like terms you might be able to combine if you really want to or if you're going to do something more with this. But at this point, I'm just going to stop right there. And again, your online homework, it's fine if you leave it like this as long as you've got all the parentheses where they need to be and don't leave off any exponents or anything like that. Um, all right, so that is a pure second partial with respect to x. I've differentiated with respect to x twice. And then I will have a mixed second partial derivative where I first differentiate this function with respect to x. That's what I have here, my original function with respect to x. And now I'm going to differentiate this with respect to y. So being careful with notation here, I'm applying the del del y operator to the left side of this. So I'll have del del y of del f del x. So the shortened notation for that is del squared f del y del x, that operator x on the left. All right, so when I differentiate this with respect to y, I will identify where's the y's and think about everything else here. So I will notice that the only y in the problem is right there. So when I differentiate this with respect to y, this 2x over x squared plus 1 is like a big constant times y squared. So when I differentiate this with respect to y, I've got this big constant, 2x over x squared plus 1, and then times the derivative of y squared with respect to y. So I'll get times 2y. And you could make this 4xy on the numerator, um, but there is our mixed second partial went with respect to x first and then with respect to y. Okay, and then here I'm going to find a couple of more second partial derivatives. So I'm going to do this sort of the way I did here. I'm going to do the mixed second partials kind of next to each other. It doesn't really matter what order you write them in, but I do want to point out a little relationship that's important here at the end. Okay, so I'm going here I have a derivative with respect to y. I'm going to do a mixed second partial. So I'm going to differentiate this one now with respect to x. So I'm going to do del del x of this. So that del del x, x on the left. So I'll have del squared f del x del y. This means derivative with respect to x of the derivative of f with respect to y. OK, so I'm differentiating here with respect to x now. So I'm going to identify where is my x, only right here. And so I don't need product rule here. The 2y out front will be held constant. And then the derivative of ln of x squared plus 1, derivative of ln of that function is going to be 1 over that function that's inside there, and then times the derivative of what's inside, so times 2x. OK, so you might notice a relationship here between these two mixed partial derivatives. Uh, they are the same. If I simplify them, they are the same. And we'll actually look at a theorem. Our textbook calls it the mixed partial derivative theorem. You might also see it called Clairaut's theorem in other texts that tells you when you might expect that these mixed second partial derivatives are the same. For many functions, you should expect that these mixed second partial derivatives will be the same. So that's kind of a nice check. It also means that if you needed to find them both and you were pretty confident in your work, maybe you only need to find one. And then you could just put that answer down for the other one as well. So we'll look at that theorem in a little bit later video so that we'll be clear about why we should have expected that to happen in this problem. Um, but for now, just understanding there are really two different mixed partial derivatives, but they often are equal to each other. Not always equal, but often. Um, OK, now I need my second pure partial with respect to y. So I found the derivative twice with respect to y. So that's del del y of del f del y. 
So I'm going to differentiate this function with respect to y. So I'm going to identify where is my y, only right here. And so when I differentiate that with respect to y, I'm treating it as all like I just have a great big constant times y. And so the derivative of that with respect to y is just all that stuff that's being held constant. So 2 times the natural log of x squared plus 1. Okay, so I've got six answers for this. It's important when you're asked a question like this on an exam or a written assignment or whatever, that it is clear which answer is for which derivative. So you can use whatever notation is appropriate. I tend to like this del f del x notation. You can use the subscript notation as well if you like. Um, but you just need to make sure that you've labeled which answer is which. And I'm perfectly fine, after you've looked at that theorem, if you know that these are both going to be equal, that you just write one of them down. But you should indicate that that's really the answer for two different problems. So you could write this answer down and then just say that that's going to be equal to this other mixed second partial derivative. All right, we'll look at that theorem in the next video and then some other theorems also related to derivatives and differentiability of multivariable functions.